In this video, I want to take a look at a complex patch that I made with Fathom Synthesizer and kind of break it down for you and show you all the different components that are making up the sound. So here I have a MIDI file that I played uh, to demonstrate the sound. and I'm going to play that for you as you watch the MIDI notes. And you'll notice that the, the sound that you hear is quite a bit more complex than what you see. And we'll go over each piece. Uh, here in just a minute. Okay, here we have Fathom opened up. We have three oscillators, each one running into uh, something different. All of our modulators are on the right. So what we'll do is we'll first, well, I'll play, I'll play the sound, one key. And show you what each one is doing. The top oscillator is the the main beat and the kind of the girth of the sound. The middle is just just a percussive sound with a delay that kind of has a, a rhythm of its own. And the bottom oscillator is just a soft string that comes in a little bit later. So let's focus on the, the primary oscillator, or the primary sound that we're hearing. The way I have my modulator set up, uh, is from top to bottom just as my oscillators are. So then when I look over here, I, I look for the volume. At each volume, it's kind of the separation of what is assigned to that particular group. For example, when I click on this volume, you'll see that that turns black. That's telling me that that's associated with that. Everything below that, you'll see the filter cutoff frequency is this filter. And then when I get to this volume, that one turns black. So just to help me keep organized, I have my modulators follow my oscillators over here on the left. So that said, back to the back to the sound here. We'll take a look at the volume envelope, <clears throat> and you'll notice that that's where the uh, that's where the rhythm's coming from. The 
wave index is the actually it's a wavetable oscillator and the wave index here this is the waves that's making the sound and it's being modulated by the same envelope that the volume is so it's kind of kind of difficult to tell or to hear if it's happening it's kind of difficult to tell because it's happening uh, so fast So we're basically going from about this shape up to that shape in a pattern of the way this envelope is set up. No rhyme or reason behind that. That's just what I used for that sound. Here, the cutoff frequency of this filter, which is just connected to that oscillator that we hear, Is set at zero. However, I have the, the modulation all the way up to allow the envelope to take full control over uh, what's going on with the dial. So to take a look at that envelope, because the top point is midway, uh, that means the filter is about halfway open at the initial setting and it immediately drops to almost to zero. Okay. It's also connected to the velocity, the note velocity. So if I hit it softer, it's one sound. Harder, if I hit it harder, the filter opens up a little bit. But because the filter set at almost zero, or the envelope takes it to almost zero, combined with the velocity, if I just barely touch it, almost nothing comes out which allows me that that sound at the beginning uh, of the piece where all you really hear is a just kind of a, a beat so the harder I push it and that's all done by assigning velocity to the amount of the cutoff frequency modulation. Moving on to sound two. This, like we said, is just that knock with the delay. It has a very quick envelope, obviously, just to give it that It's also tied to the velocity. So the harder I hit it, the louder it's going to get. It also has a pitch envelope set to the same to the same shape. So it's going from a high pitch or a higher pitch and immediately dropping down. And we can take a look at uh, that as it's as it's set up. Guess that should have been set to bipolar this whole time. Allow it that range. Well, that's not really what I wanted. If you kind of get the idea, I hear it. Yeah, and I hear it with the multiply. I just I don't see it here. I'm not sure why.
But that also, that pitch envelope here is being controlled by the velocity. So that's almost like to say the harder you hit it, you know, it's like the higher this goes up and the softer you hit it, the envelope would look more like that. So that's kind of what that's doing. Of course, it's going into the delay. Let's take a look at that. The delay in Fathom's pretty powerful. Um, this module here is the center, and then the left and the right. Uh, without going into a whole lot of detail on what's happening here, we can see that I have a filter set up on the, the repeat of uh, the left side. Basically what that's doing is allowing the, the low portion of the repeat to pass through and it dampens the high. So kind of like it would be in a, an analog delay or a bucket brigade delay where each repeat would have a little bit less high end in it. The right side is even more so cut back a little bit and the center even more so. On the right side, it's twice as long as the left. Now if I were to change that a little bit, you kind of hear it skip a little bit. But because it was set at twice the amount, they're actually on top of each other. It just gives it a little bit more space, a little bit more width. So I kind of had it set up at three, six, and nine to give it that um, triplet feel when compared to the other. to the next sound. And that's just the strings that come in slow. Here the envelope is what you would expect. A slow, a slow attack coming up to the sustain point, holding that as long as you hold the key down. And as soon as you let up on the key, it releases. Of course, if I wanted to make that longer. But in this case, at a period of 3.5, it works with the beat of the first oscillator. The wave index for that sound, for the string sound, is set up so that the, the wave changes almost as the volume does. So in other words, it's starting out at a lower, a lower numbered wave and then increases up the the wavetable through time. So as if to say it started here and it moved up to this wave by the end of, or at the sustain period. So it starts off with this wave and it moves into that one, which is a little bit more aggressive, has a little bit more grit to it. So you can hear that. So that's basically it. The three sounds together bring us that. Of course, 
course, remembering that it is velocity sensitive uh, in a couple of different places. And because of that original uh, volume envelope of the first of the first piece is not tied to the song. Every time you press a key, this will start over. And this allows you to do places where one is playing, for example. And then you can play other, other notes on top of it that restart that same envelope and start over every time you touch it. So it allows you to do something like this. And you kind of hear what was happening there because it was restarting. I could get it to stutter. If I were to put that on song, it would just go through. And every note would have, you know, it would go through the envelope together. So if you played one note after another, it would just enter in at the part that this envelope was continuing to play into loop. But for this patch, I wanted it set up to where each note would trigger so that I could play within it. And then we added a reverb to the end. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about here other than, you know, you can see the typical controls. Just a little bit of reverb added in. Pretty long decay, a little bit of pre-delay. This patch also has uh, a mod wheel modulator on it using a square wave just to turn the, the volume up and down on our primary, uh, the girth oscillator, I'll call it. And you can hear that here. And of course that was done just by assigning the volume of this oscillator to the square LFO and then modulating that with the modulation wheel here. So that's basically the anatomy of a, uh, a pretty complex patch to give you some idea of how you can combine things and layer things, combine some velocity uh, and some other tools of the trade to, to help you create some really nice deep things that once you get used to playing with, um, there's a lot of things you can do with them. Anyway, hope it uh, gives you some inspiration to move forward.